Just three days, Joe, until the Iowa caucuses. People are actually going to vote, believe it or not. It's happening. A new poll puts former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley in second place for the first time in Iowa. The Suffolk University survey, Trump still leads the race with 54 percent of support from likely caucus goers. Second place, 34 points back is Nikki Haley at 20 percent. She's followed by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who has focused most of his campaign on Iowa. He, though, is at 13 percent, 41 points behind Donald Trump. The bulk of the poll was conducted before former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie left the race on Wednesday, though Christie hasn't really played in Iowa, so not much of an impact there. Entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy, they both earned single-digit support in the latest survey. Let's bring in NBC News national affairs analyst John Hyland, who is in Iowa for us this morning. John, what's going on on the ground three days out? Well, first of all, um, notably absent here in Iowa, you, Willie, I know. Uh, Joe, Mika, none of you guys are here, and I, I'm happy about that and, and worried about it, and then I got here and they said, as soon as I landed last night, they said there's a blizzard coming, a uh, foot of snow in the next 24 hours, uh, and the National Weather Service said life-threatening winter weather conditions yeah. in Des Moines tomorrow, and I thought, I know why those guys aren't here now. Yeah, I think on caucus night, John, correct me if I'm wrong, with the wind chill, it's going to be negative 20 or something like that. So a tough night to go out and be with your neighbors to talk politics. <laughs> that is what they're forecasting. Um, and I got to say, I'm looking forward to it. I'm happy to be here putting my life on the line for there morning jump. There you go. All right. So what's the vibe on the ground? Is it a Trump runaway? <laughs> Do we talk about the race for second place. What is that looking like right now? We're talking about the, the, the race for second place, uh, Willie, 100%. And it's been, you know, basically since Labor Day, Trump nudged above 50% in all polling, essentially, most polling since Labor Day. He has stayed there consistently all throughout the fall. Uh, he continues to be the Suffolk poll. He's at 40, 54%. No one doubts Donald Trump's going to win this race. And I would say, in Iowa, no one doubt, and I would say that the weather is going to help him in some sense because, you know, I'm not sure how many Iowans are going to brave negative 26 wind chills for Ron DeSantis. I'm pretty sure that the hardest core believers in the Republican Party are Donald Trump's people. They're going to show up on Monday. But this race for second place between DeSantis and Haley, Haley surging in New Hampshire, you know, now if you believe the Suffolk poll and we'll know more on over the weekend when we find out about the, over the weekend, the, 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 the big Iowa poll, the Ann Seltzer poll that NBC News and Real, what's going on here? But there's a sense that uh, that Haley is not just surging in New Hampshire, but now potentially starting to pick up some some speed here in, in Iowa. And if that turns out to be, if that if the polling right now turns out to be right, uh, Nikki Haley kind of comes from uh, out of nowhere over the course of the last few months and takes second place. Probably spells the end of Ron DeSantis's campaign and gives her uh, a not. I mean, look. Trump's still going to win by 30 points, probably, but gives her some kind of momentum as the clear Trump alternative going into New Hampshire, where, you know, some people think she might be able to beat him. Yeah. You know, uh, John, uh, we've done enough of these to understand that uh, there are wild swings in the final week. And of course, in New Hampshire, you, you had George W. Bush getting absolutely crushed by John McCain. She's absolutely stunned the political yeah. world. That was in 2000. In 2008, it was Hillary. Uh, everybody, we were all saying goodbye to Hillary Clinton. Uh, and then she, uh, she shocked Barack Obama. Uh, and that happens in New Hampshire. But I've also re I also remember it happen happening in uh, Iowa. So when I start seeing 54 to 20, I don't see a 34 point race. It's the same thing when I was in politics. I never looked at the numbers. I always looked at the trend lines and I saw where things were breaking. Right. And, and when I see Nikki Haley jumping up to 20 out of nowhere, when everybody says she has no ground support, she has no nothing going for her there. And I see Trump just like at 54. This is a race that could end up much closer. This is a race that could end up 40-30. Uh, I mean, we've we've all been shocked night after night uh, in Iowa. Uh, what are you what are you what are you hearing on the ground there? Well, it's not impossible, Joe. And look, usually what happens in Iowa is you get someone who gets a late surge. It usually is not quite this close to the to, to, to caucus day, but you'll see over the course of a month or six weeks, someone, whether it's a Rick Santorum uh, or a Mike Huckabee, uh, kind of coming up 
uh, make it gaining ground really rapidly in the closing month or so, couple of months before the caucuses. Haley has been later breaking than that. But as you point out, you know, this is a state dominated by evangelical voters in the Republican Party. Nikki Haley was is not tailor made for this uh, for this electorate. But there is also something you've seen in the polling here, which is that there's a there's a chunk. Maybe it's a third of the Iowa Republicans who are just are looking for someone other than Donald Trump. And as it's become clearer and clearer that DeSantis is fading, Chris Christie now out of the race. Vivek not, not in the race. The, the, the race is now, uh, in the eyes of a lot of Republican voters, boiling down to, are you for Trump or are you for who's left? And, and, and Nikki Haley has, had, has done a good job in this fall, but there's also a sense she is, whether you love her politics or don't love her politics, she's the only one left in the Republican Party who has a chance of being the non-Trump candidate. And as that is dawning on people, it's possible that you're right, that what happens here in Iowa is that at the very end, all of the anti-Trump vote kind of coalesces around her. Uh, and if that happens, as I said before, uh, she will, you know, she'll still, she could still end up losing by more than double digits to Trump. But that would be a big surprise. It would be the big story out of the caucuses. On, on Monday night, Tuesday morning, and you know how important, that, what's the narrative coming out of this race, how much that drives things into New Hampshire and how beneficial that could be for her. Well, and, and really the calendar uh, breaks Nikki Haley's way. If you look at the gap between New Hampshire and South Carolina, if things go the way Nikki Haley <laughs> right. believes they can go and go the way a lot of New Hampshire experts are saying that Nikki Haley could have a big win in New Hampshire, Donald Trump has the loser, uh, sort of the loser label around him for a month. We know that will not go well for him. John Heilman, thank you so much. We will see you. Now, Monday, we want to see you outside in the 15 below. <laughs> and, and trust me, trust me, we've all been out there with wind chill. It's going to be at least minus 45. So we want to, we want to see the jacket. We want to see the whole, whole broadcast news thing like we sent you to the Lucian Islands. Yeah, we're going to do that like the Alaskan serial killer case. I'll, I will be out there. I'll be out there. Uh, I would be, I'd feel better about it if you at least send Willie or maybe Lemire out here uh, to be with yeah. me. But, uh, but if, if I need it, I will. Yeah, it's you solo, baby. Thanks so much. <laughs> Greatly appreciate it.